morning, I'm Lisa Rose to see you with Senior Notebook here in beautiful Craig Park, which is in Painted Post. I've never been here before. It's beautiful. And I'm delighted to be here with Joan Wilson, who's going to talk about a very special project that she's involved in for a very personal reason. So welcome, Joan. Thank you so much, Lisa. And thanks for having us on the show. Absolutely. I'm so excited to get the opportunity to talk about Bampa's house. Uh, Bampa was a name uh, that my brother used to be called. His grandchildren couldn't pronounce Grandpa. <laughs> and his name was Jim Dugan and he passed away in 2016. And at the end of his life, we began to realize as a family that there weren't very many alternatives in this vicinity for people to go to spend their final days. And we found out about a model called a comfort care home. There's actually one in Steuben County in Wayland but there aren't any others in Shemong, Steuben, or Yates, or excuse me, not Yates, but Schuyler. So we thought this is what we wanted to do in Jim's honor. So we want to establish a comfort care home. It's a home with um, two bedrooms and two accessible bathrooms. There's a fully stocked kitchen for loved ones to come and maybe cook if they want to while they're visiting. There's no visiting hours, like most of the institutional places one could go. Um, they can come anytime. They can come anytime, and they can even stay overnight. If they're from out of town, we have accommodations for them, too. So the care is 24-7. It's done by trained volunteers, and then it's supplemented by Care First professional hospice nurses. So again, it's completely around the clock. So we want to be there for whatever they want. If they want to be alone, they can be alone. Uh, if they want to see the stars one last time, we'll arrange for our house to have the ability to take them outside right in their hospital bed. Well, I am amazed, Joan, at every little detail that you have thought of that someone could need at that time in their lives. and. You know, it made me think that when you're going through that very trying time with a loved one, the last thing you want to have to think about is how do we care for our loved one? It's already a very challenging time, and you want something that's compassionate and something that, you know, you can feel um, that you showing your love and your concern. And I think this house is a perfect example of that. I, I love the idea of it. So um, what about cost to the patients? Okay, well, there's no charge to the resident. Homes like this one are funded by uh, events, like the upcoming 5K that we're going to have, um, and bequests, memorials, grants, and corporate sponsorship. It um, costs some money to run the house every year, um, but all of these homes, there are now 30 of them in New York, um, they're a real community effort and everybody's pitching in, you know, not only individuals, but merchants, associations, professional associations, churches, uh, everyone has a part in this. It, it more or less reminds me a little bit about Ronald, Mc, uh, Ronald McDonald House, where, you know, this is again a, a challenging time for families and they have that some place to go, which I think is so important. So uh, maybe people can think of it that way. Where do you stand now with getting a location and making this happen? Okay. Well, a lot of people ask me that question because we've been working on it since really 2016. And we have now looked at over 50 different properties in the vicinity. We've looked at churches that maybe could be converted. We've looked at commercial buildings homes that are already built, vacant land, and I'm really happy to say we're very close in selecting a home. Uh, and I think everyone will be excited when they hear our news, but I don't want to say until we finally close and everything is in order. But uh, we did originally, when we started out, we set a goal of $750,000 that we needed to raise and that would cover the cost of the home, the furnishing of the home, uh, as well as our first year operating costs. And I'm really pleased to say we're now at about 550,000. This community has responded in an incredible way. 
from every level, you know, people who donate a dollar to people that can afford to donate more. Well, it is something that touches many, many lives. So when we come back, we're going to talk about a very special event coming up.